the Houston Texans. This was a team that we talked about a lot because you know what? The national media doesn't really cover the Texans that much. Why would they? Well, why would they? But we took it upon ourselves on the Paul Farrington show to do that. At number two, they go CJ Stroud, which I believe is what we all agreed probably would happen. Jack, I know that you didn't think it should. Well, I wanted Will, but they you got wanted both. Will. So let's talk about Stroud first. He comes in, it's honestly, a tough situation for a young quarterback. Their receivers, mm-hmm. Robert Woods is the leading receiver in that unit with Nico Collins and John Mechie. John Mechie will, could be a fun wild card to watch this year. He's, he's coming back from cancer, so obviously a lot going on with him physically and probably mentally as well. But He's a wild card. He could be very good. Damian Pierce, good running back. I, we'll see how that offense goes. I, I see some tough times for C.J. Stroud in his mm-hmm. rookie season. Uh, after that, though, you'd think like, okay, they got, their, they got their guy. We'll see them again at 12. Massive trade up with the Cardinals. Here's the, here's the terms of the trade. Houston gave up 12, 33, and a fourth rounder. And next year's first rounder, their own, and the next year's third to get Will Anderson and a fourth rounder this season. Big trade, but they get a big player. You like it? I I liked the names and the players that they got this year. I was big on Will Anderson. I, I've always been I've always been the guy who says, "All right, let's take the best defensive player on the board." I think defense is huge. Obviously, te- the Texans do too. They got who they hope to be their you know their future quarterback. However, I I cannot say I'm the biggest fan of the deal. I think it's a lot to give up. It is a lot because for a team who's gonna re- gonna be rebuilding for the next couple of years. You want those first round picks. So if you go and you take CJ Stroud, okay, here's our quarterback. We don't necessarily need Will Anderson. We can keep our first round pick next year. But if he's as good as you thought he was gonna be, like you said you might take him number one overall, right? Yes. Is that is that worth I, I, I don't think it was worth giving up as many picks as they did. I, okay. really, I think it was a lot. For a team who was going to be rebuilding for a long time, it was a lot to give and up. And a lot of holes on that roster. Yeah, it was a lot to give up. Ziggy, how about you? Did you like it? I thought it was one of the worst draft day trades we've seen in the decade. I oh thought it gosh. was a horrendous trade. And here's I not, why. I don't think it was that bad. I, Here, <laughs> here's why, bad. right? The reason this trade was made was straightforward. The front office didn't want to take a quarterback. The owner said, we're taking a quarterback. So the only way to do that is to take both Will Anderson and C.J. Stroud because the front office wasn't willing to let him go. But look, this is like classic overconfidence and thinking you've got your guy, so he's going to hit. Among edge rushers taken the first round in the past 10 years, only half of them have had their first-year option picked up. Make it a little bit better because he went to the top of the first round, say it's 60 65%, but this team's not going to be good. No. right? By like projected win rates in Vegas, they're expected to have a top three pick next year. So is Will Anderson good enough to be worth two top three picks? And are you so confident C.J. Stroud's going to hit that you're willing to give up the chance to take a guy like Caleb Williams if things don't work out? I, I don't see why you're doing this. If they end up being the worst team in the league, I, I agree that it's a horrible trade. Well, if, you, well, if you lose Caleb Williams because of it, yes. If they, if they make the playoffs, it's a bad trade. Well, that's oh, the, I you can't, that. you, if you're If you are a team that, like, variance-wise, has a chance to be really bad, even if you don't, giving up future first because you're really, really confident if your guy is foolish. Well, that's These NFL like GMs it. don't consistently Sorry. hit. That's what I'm like personally. I agree with, with Ziggy there. Is I, I think that even with Stroud, let's say you don't take Will Anderson, right? Even with CJ Stroud this year, you will probably still be one of the worst teams in the league. Yeah. And so it's, like, it's a quarterback-heavy draft. Even if you're picking five next year, a lot of good quarterbacks, you could even get trade value there. Yeah, it's tough to give up so many picks when you're trying to rebuild for several years. Here's what I'll say, though. Over the past three seasons... They got two studs. They got two studs. They do. They do. They got two studs. Over the past three years, the Texans have won 11 games. That entire franchise, the fan base, everyone, they have been horrible for three straight years. And the one thing that I told them to do, if I were a Texans fan, I wanted them to be aggressive. I wanted them to go get Stroud and, and start the future with the quarterback. And then you come back and get Anderson, who, before the season was a Heisman candidate. He's one of the best, pro- he was one of the highly, most highly touted college defenders of the past, what, 10 years or something like yeah, that? I love him. So I have no problem with them being aggressive. It's a lot to give up. It really is a lot. But for the first time ever, you saw Texans fans online saying, this is the greatest day ever to be a Texan fan. For the first time ever, you saw some confidence and some hope. And I'm okay going and getting a guy. If he's a monster, like a lot of people think he can be, you're going to look back and say, all right, you know what? Yeah, we gave up a first-round pick, but we got two guys who can go out and ball, 
and there's for, for the first time in a long time some hope in Houston. Like so it, I'm I'm okay with it. I know it's a no, lot, but I'm okay with it. If it yeah, pans to, to out be, like they, oh, sorry, you guys. Are, I was gonna say to be clear, Paul, you're absolutely right. This is why Nick Casario made the trade because he's getting fired if they don't have results next year. So the future <laughs> first means nothing to him, right? He's just trying to keep his job and get another impact player, but. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know about it. Like maybe when when you start with a new quarterback, sometimes that can extend you a little bit. And I do love your rumor about or the, that little rumor you threw in there about the uh, conflicting. Well, uh, all, I'm, all I'm saying is this is about three hours before the draft. Uh, Will Anderson was the heavy favorite. Then suddenly over the course of like five minutes, that odds go to minus 2000 CJ Stroud. Then it's the front lot. office makes this really aggressive trade. It's we all lot. know what happens. We all know what happens. <laughs> all right. If, go th- ahead. if things do pan out like they want them to with these two picks, though, we're sitting here in three or four years like, wow, well, like they got their quarterback and the captain of their defense. Yeah. So it's 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 a roll of the dice, but I don't think it's a terrible. If role. Will Anderson turns out to be someone like a TJ Watt or a Micah Parsons, and I know that these guys are, you know, the best in the league. But if you wind up getting something like that, which I'm assuming that they believe he will turn out to be, of course, of course, then then you're happy with this. 